Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. Thanks for joining me. Now today we're going to make a holiday card again. This is for my Holiday Head Start series and we're going to use the stamp set from Stampendous. It's called the Merry Word Stamp Set. I love, love the font on the larger sentiments. Beautiful. And then there's lots of block sentiments that you can use to customize your card. Now I'm also going to use this designer die from Cartabella. It's the fir tree die. Now, I actually had went through my dies and realized I didn't have a Christmas tree die set. So, um, I had a lot of dies that were Christmas trees that, that coordinated with stamp sets, but I didn't have a standalone Christmas tree die. So, I thought this would be perfect, and it wasn't too expensive, so I picked it up too. There's two different sizes of, of Christmas trees here. I'm just going to use my nippers here and snip them apart. And then I have two different shades of green cardstock. So we're going to cut out two different colors of trees using the lighter green with the larger tree and then the darker green with a smaller tree. We're going to cut those out. Now while I'm die cutting, I'm going to take a piece of white cardstock and take my double stitched rectangle dies and we're going to create a frame. If you watch my videos, you know I, I love my frames, <laughs> but I'm going to layer two of them together. Just tape them down and then I'll die cut everything out. Now when I did that, I also die cut out a panel that will fit behind my frame, and then I also die cut out an extra um, panel using the smallest die that we use for the inside of our frame. I want to create a um, snowbank, so I'm grabbing my Lawn Fawn stitched border dies here, and I cut out a little border, and my this way my little snowbank has stitching all the way around it. It kind of just flows better. This is going to be a very clean and simple card and so I thought the stitch lines really really help out with the simplicity of it. But I taped that down to the inside of my panel. Now after we have, we have that done we're going to do some stamping with our stamp set. So I'm going to grab the Believe and I'm going to place that towards the top of my inside panel and then I'm just going to grab my Mini Misty and we'll place this inside there once it's placed down. Now for my sentiment, I want to use a green ink. So I'm going to use my Distress Oxide inks. I'm actually going to grab a Forest Moss and some Twisted Citron. It's So we're going to go completely on the opposite ends of the green. We have the darkest green here and then we have a real bright, almost neon green. And I thought those two would blend real pretty together. I'm going over the top of my sentiment with the darker ink and then going over the bottom with the lighter ink. Now um, the darker ink did transfer to my Twisted Citron, but no worries. With the Oxide inks it's nice because you just use your blending tool and it comes right up. It goes on your blending tool, but that's okay because it's going to blend out anyway. But I'll stamp that once and then just to get it a nice nice even blend and a nice crisp image, I'm going to do the same exact thing. So going over the top with my um, Forest Moss Distress Oxide ink and going over the bottom again with my Twisted Citron. And I think that just creates a beautiful gradient. Lovely. I'm going to clean off my, my Mini Misty here and my stamp and then we're going to grab the second part of our sentiment. So I chose, there's a few different ones that you can interact with the Believe. And so I chose the one that says, In the Magic of the Season. I'm going to place that right below my, my Believe, making sure it's straight. And then I'll just pick it up with the lid of my Misty and we'll stamp the second part of our sentiment. Now I'm going to use some VersaFine Onyx Black ink for the second part. And we'll stamp that right below. Lovely. Okay, next I am going to take my 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 frame here and I'm gonna place it on my back panel, adding some tape, and then I'm gonna place my sentiment on the inside of my back panel. This way it's already lined up. So when I flip my panel over, um it, it's gonna line up beautifully. We're gonna create a kind of sort of shaker card. My my card really didn't shake too much, but I really liked the way it turned out. So I'm grabbing a piece of acetate here and I'm just going to use my glue to glue that to my frame. Then 
Then I'm going to grab some foam tape. Now I did double up on the foam tape. I'm just going to place that all along the edges of my frame. And here you can see I did dub I doubled it up there. Just folded it over and then um, the foam tape I'm using here is actually the three quarter inch so I just cut it in half lengthwise. Okay now we're going to add a little bit of sparkle to our card. So I'm using my glue and going around just below the stitch line on my snowbank. And then in my stash I have some Stampin' to Shaved Ice. This stuff is fantastic. Love it. It has their iridescent flakes and they're on the smaller side but it creates beautiful snow backgrounds. And so we're going to use this today. I'm just going to go over the glue that I had placed down and add some of those sh that shaved ice. And then before we finish the shaker in the stamp set there's these little snowflakes. I'm just going to take some memento ink, it's black ink, and I'm going to stamp three of them just to kind of balance off the top portion of my sentiment. Lovely. And when I moved my lid I dropped it and I got a little smudge on there so I'm just going to take my sand eraser and erase that smudge off. <laughs> okay, I'm going to grab the rest of my shaved ice and fill in the bottom area of my little shaker. And I have, um, I ordered one of those Nouveau Deluxe Spoons, but it hasn't came in yet. So I'm going to be using a ruler to pick those up and it worked just fine. Anything flat. But I'll remove the release paper, add my frame, and there we go. Now, the flakes that, that hit are on the glue are kind of keeping that shaved ice on the bottom portion of my shaker and I kind of like that because I wanted it filled in and I didn't want it to go all over my sentiment so that's a great way to kind of contain um, these particles in, inside your shaker so they stay kind of positioned in one spot. Okay now I already adhered my shaker to my card front. My card front is A2 size. It's four and a quarter by five and a half inch the standard A2 size card and then I decided to add a little bit of shading to my Christmas trees using the forest moss distress oxide ink. Once that's done we're just going to use our glue and glue that down to the left side of our card here. Kind of overlapping them a bit. Now I did normally I would pop up the second tree that we're just placing down now, but since I doubled up on the foam tape, I didn't want my card to be too bulky, so that I just laid them um, flush together. Now I grabbed the little heart button from my stash and some brown jute cord or brown twine. I'm just going to thread the twine through my button, and then I'm not going to tie a bow just yet. I'm going to add some glue dots behind it and kind of position it on my card where I want it. And then once it's down, then I can tie my, tie my bow. It just makes it easier to tie bows and adjust them, kind of make them pretty. <laughs> I'll just trim off the tails. And that is it, guys. That's my card for today. You can see here, if you flip it over, it doesn't move. It stays kind of stationary. And I like that. And a few flakes go up to the front, but just add a nice little sparkle. Quick and easy card, but I think the outcome turned out so pretty. Thanks so much for joining me for my Holiday Head Start series. I wish you a fantastic day, guys, and we will see you again real soon. Bye-bye.